Alright guys, Newcastle have just beaten United 2-0 and yeah, they were by far the better side. This game could have been more goals in truth in terms of the margin that Newcastle won by because they were just by far the better side in this game. Uh, Man United, they're, they're a completely different side under Eric Ten Hag at Old Trafford than they are away from home. And I, 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 that, that's like not nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you know, teams generally will perform better at home, but I think some of United's away performances this season have been shocking. Uh, this this game, yeah, it was a poor performance from United. The game at Anfield, the 7-0, shocking performance. Brentford, poor performance. Man City, poor performance. That There's been too many of these games where it's just been poor performances away from home. And that, that's something that uh, Eric Ten Hag needs to look into in terms of a mentality thing, I think, more than anything. Because obviously it's, it's going to be the home fans that are making the difference. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's something that Ten Hag really needs to look into and try to change at United. But for Newcastle, it's, it's a brilliant result and a brilliant performance as well. Uh, there, there weren't any players for Newcastle who you felt as though had a poor game. I think uh, Joe Willock's finishing in, until um, yeah, you know Newcastle scored. Joe Willock in particular, I thought his finishing was just poor. Um, in the first half, he had two chances which he should have easily buried. The one in particular, the one where it's come uh, back from David De Gea. How on earth he's he stuck that straight back at De Gea, and to the other one which he skies over the bar, he's got to keep that on target. So. I think he could have done a bit better with his finishing, but other than that, he played well, Joe Willock. And yeah, the wingers, Jacob Murphy, Alan Sam Maximin, were terrorising the United fullbacks. Longstaff, he was getting forward as well as Joe Willock. Isaac was causing problems. So it was a really positive performance by Newcastle. And for United, yeah, the, the, the midfield today of uh, Sabitzer, McTominay, and. Um, sort of white horse more than more than Fernandez at times was, was dropping deep, especially in that first half. But I think in the second half that they that uh, Ten Hag decided Fernandez is going to be the one who plays a bit deeper. And he was pushing uh, McTominay quite far forward as well. I think the idea was to stop Bruno Gimaresh having time on the ball, but Newcastle found ways around this. So the game plan in the first half didn't work at all from Ten Hag, but the biggest problem was the solution as well didn't really work from Ten Hag because uh, the game plan was to let let Newcastle have a fair bit of the ball but to strike them on the counter attack but I didn't hear any incidents or any moments in this game where Marcus Rashford was able to get himself involved in fact I think that might go down as Marcus Rashford's worst performance so far this season he's had a brilliant season for United I don't know how many goals he scored he, he must be in the 20s by now. He's, he's form, especially since uh, Christmas, has been, has been, you know, superb. So um, it's just, hopefully for him, it'll be a one-off. But um, yes, it's just one of them, really. Uh, Anthony was probably the main dangerous threat in the first half in particular. He caused Dan Byrne a lot of problems. Uh, Dan Byrne didn't deal too badly with him, I didn't feel, but... Um, it, it was certainly, you know, stopping Newcastle from fully committing. But in, in the second half, it, it felt as though that with the change of and the uh, restructuring of uh, Man United's midfield, it, it seemed to somehow halt getting the ball to Anthony out wide. So the, the, the change, if anything, I felt from Ten Hag that he made at half-time, playing McTominay like the deeper of the three midfielders and pushing Sabitzer and uh, Fernandez a bit far forward. It, it just it didn't, uh, if, if anything, it made things worse, I think, uh, to, to be completely honest, because I, I just think it, it was one of them where probably United should have stuck at it and hoped that something was coming their way, because they were a lot more... Um, they they were a lot more defensively solid in, in the first half because even though it felt like Newcastle should have scored in the first half, the chances they were getting in the second half were a lot better quality because the the main chances that they had in the first half 
yeah, there, there was Joe Willicks and Isaac's header, that, that double save that De Gea was forced into making. And De Gea was making a fair few saves in this game. It could have been a lot worse, the result, if it wasn't for De Gea for United. But um, it felt as though that United were being able to defend deep and stop Newcastle from getting it in dangerous areas too often in the first half, whereas that changed in the second half. So... I, I just think Ten Hag's game plan didn't really work at all today. I think um, that especially the change uh, just needed to stick at it and hope hope for the best, I think, because Newcastle completely dominated this game and deserve all three points and the 2-0 win. And, and yeah, Eddie Howe did this without, you know, some of his uh, key players who, who were in the starting eleven at the start of the season. So it does show that Newcastle have a bit of squad depth in, in the uh, midfield and forward line uh, because off, off the bench we saw four players who I think are, are decent players. Like you, you look at Joe Linton, he, he's been a br uh, brilliant player for Newcastle the past 12 months. Callum Wilson it has been performing really well for Bournemouth and Newcastle in the Premier League for the best part of a decade now. Um, who, who else came on? Elliot Anderson in some of the games I've seen him play recently, although uh, it, like he hasn't really started many games for Newcastle, he's he's put in some brilliant performances. I think at the uh, game against Nottingham Forest away from home uh, for Newcastle, he, he was a game changer in that game. I, I thought, and Anthony Gordon obviously as well. Their their new big money signing. So Newcastle definitely have options in this team now, um, and. That, that, that's a really good sign going forward because if they are to challenge for Europe this season and I mean looking at it right now they're in a pretty healthy position because they are third in the league on goal difference this game has uh, meant they leapfrog United uh, in in the table so it's, it's you know it's ridiculously highly likely that Newcastle are going to be playing European football of some sort next season, whether it's Champions League or not, I, I think there's a good chance they can hold on for top four at this rate. They, they had a bit of a stumble in uh, January and February, but they, they look like they've, they're have they starting to uh, overcome this now. Uh, I, I think Alexander Rizak uh, being brought back to full fitness has definitely helped with that, uh, is my opinion. But yeah, if, if they are to get European football, you know that that's at least six more games a season, so they they are going to need a big squad, and it, it looks as though they've they've got that. But I, th I think maybe in the summer, what they might need to focus on is the defensive areas because uh, the the back four they've got at the moment of Trippier, Shah, Botman, and uh, Dan Byrne, it, it's it's a very good back four, but it can certainly be improved in in, in some areas or. or definitely have you know more options uh, I, I think at centre back they're, they're a bit light in, in that area in terms of uh, backups so yeah that that's, might be where they uh, look to add to their squad in, in the summer but back to back to United um, the, the, the forward is, is the main thing I think uh, the Berghorst just hasn't done enough, I don't think. He, yeah, he's he's performed well in some of the big games that United have played, like against Barcelona. He, he had a good game, but he shouldn't really be starting for Man United if we're being completely honest. And yeah, they they, they need something else really. So I think the main target for them in the summer is going to be someone like Victor Osimhen. I I would uh, imagine just because. Out wide, they've, they've got options, obviously. Rashford, Anthony, Jadon Sancho, Alejandro Garnacho. Midfield, yeah, they could probably do with another midfielder, given that Sabitz is going to, you know, uh, go back to uh, Bayern Munich in, in the summer. And that, that leaves them with Casemiro, Eriksen, Fernandes, Fred and McTominay, which is not the worst set of options ever, but I just think they could do with uh, maybe one more. And defensively, it's not it's not too bad, but it's it's just that lack of a top quality striker. I think is a, is a huge problem for United right now because you know you need someone up front who can uh, consistently supply goals, and um, they haven't really got that. Their cost has only scored 
a couple of goals for United, I think, since he's joined in January and he's played got to be at least 15 games, I'd imagine, by now. And I don't think he scored a single goal in the league, which, you know, is terrible for the forwards, the, the, the starting striker uh, of, of a team who are currently sat in the top four. So that, that's somewhere where they need to look to improve. I think Anthony Martial, I know he's not world class, but he is someone who over the course of a season, if you play him in the most games, which is hard to do because of his fitness record, I understand that, but he, he will consistently score you goals more than Veghorst will. So I think if Martial's fit, he's got to be the number one option up front for Ten Hag from now on. I think I think Veghorst has had his chances and the argument for Veghorst is obviously the work he does off the ball, off the ball sorry, but... Um, like to get games like today uh, and there's been a few lately I think the game against Southampton the game against Liverpool too where he hasn't really had enough of an impact off the ball in terms of his pressing or his uh, you know build up play is uh, laying off laying off the ball to teammates to play them in sometimes it hasn't had enough of an uh, effect, so I think Martial should be brought into the team uh, personally. But yeah, th this is a huge result for Newcastle and at home this season. I think other than a uh, disappointing result uh, against Liverpool, uh, if it, I think it was mid-February, they've had some really good results at home against the bigger sides in the Premier League. They've, they've still got to play Arsenal at home, I think, at St. James, St. James's Park. But uh, they, they've managed to get a draw against Man City. They managed to beat Chelsea, I think. Joe Willock Screamer uh, won, the game, won, uh, won the game for them in that one. And they've, they've now won against Man United as well. So they're, they're managing to get some really good results at St. James's Park this season, so that, that's a really good sign for them as well. But yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.